animation and digital arts, critical studies, directing, producing, interactive media, production, and writing, all backed by a broad liberal arts education in each field. CU at USC is brought to you by the University of Southern California School of Cinematic Arts. Kelly McQueen from Kid Tribe coming up next on CU at USC, the best college talk show on television. Stay tuned. Produced and directed and choreographed. Well, hello there. My name is Dr. Hoopenstein, and I'm here to teach you how to hoopy. I'm just finishing up my warm up routine so we can get to business. Take your hoop and spin it on your arm. Be careful not to do your neighbor any harm. This move is. who's joining us tonight. Thanks so much for being here, Kelly. Oh, well, thank you for having me. So those were some amazing clips. Can you tell me a little bit about your show and about Kid Tribe? Well, Kid Tribe, we're an international obesity prevention program. We have over two million children that we've worked with throughout the United States and the United Kingdom. We're moving into Japan, hopefully India this year as well. And our whole mission is to create an environment where being healthy is cool and where kids are getting their exercise and really developing a healthy attitude towards fitness and exercise and eating well because the childhood obesity epidemic is it's growing and it's already you know it's tripled in the last two decades do you see it going do you see the rates declining or do you see it continuing to be a problem well unfortunately unless uh, we make major changes in the schools and in the communities and certainly at home uh, the statistics are showing that it's going to rise. This generation of children is the first generation ever, 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 whose life expectancy is lower than their parents, meaning they won't outlive their parents. And uh, one out of three kids born after 2000 will have type 2 diabetes. 
before they reach adulthood. And type 2 diabetes is preventable. It's the kind of diabetes that grandma and grandpa used to get when you know they were later mm -hmm. on in their years. And now children... Young kids are getting yeah, it. It's, it's so serious. And unfortunately, we're not really seeing the, the major implications just yet that will affect the economy. Um, but more importantly, just people's quality of life. It's, it's very serious. And what do you attribute the problem to? Well, it's simple. It's inactivity and it's uh, improper nutrition. Um, you know, and, and, and people are just living sedentary lifestyles. It's, it's, it's hard. They're cutting PE out of schools, um, you know, with the, the kind of food that they're serving in schools. Uh, you know, it's just, it's, and, it's, and schools aren't really the only problem. The fast food industry, of course, um, just the processed food. And, and then the fact of, you know, kids after school or on the weekends, they're not riding their bikes and climbing trees and playing outside. Everything's kind of centered at home and on the couch. And, you know, they've got very yeah. developed thumb muscles, mm -hmm. but, um, but, you know, they're not getting the exercise that, that they once did. Well, there's so many factors contributing to this problem, but how do you solve it? Well, where do you start? Exactly. Um, what Kid Tribe is all about is creating an environment that's so much fun, that feels like such a party, that exercise is the byproduct. You know, they, all the, their peers, their friends are doing it. It's so cool. The music's blasting. Uh, it's about freestyle hip hop dancing. It's about you know, doing crazy tricks with hula hoops. It's about these huge concert events. We have Hoopa Palooza fitness concerts where we go from school to school to school. I mean, every single day of the week, we're working with thousands of children at once. And, you know, on the mic and rapping and rocking and just watching them transform. And uh, my whole message is, you know, hey, we have a body and you better make friends with it regardless of what size it is because you're going to have it for the rest of your life. So, um, you know, you got to move it. We're born to move or else we wouldn't have legs. So we're born to move. So let's move. And, uh, and, and just creating an environment where, where, where that's acceptable, where that's fun. And, you know, the kids are having a blast. Well, childhood obesity has really been in the headlines in the past couple of uh, past couple of years, especially with Michelle Obama making it one of her lead causes. Thank goodness yeah. for her. Well, do you think that really makes any difference? Yes. For the first time, I started Kid Tribe eight years ago. I founded it in 2002, and it was my direct reaction to the tragedy that happened at September 11th. Um, I just I knew I had to do something and step up and. And, and just live from my heart and do something to make this world a better place for children. And, uh, and dance and, and music, that's my first love. So that's on a self-esteem level where, where it really grew from. And then I found myself in the middle of the childhood obesity epidemic, realizing that I have a very cool solution and more importantly, prevention. Um, and so I've been doing this for almost eight years. And just in the last few months, the First Lady has been able to bring people together that, you know, her, her collective and her, her think tanks and, you know, it's, it's amazing. She's been able to, to create so much change in just a couple of months. Never before have we had such a champion for this cause. And, uh, you know, we've just been, and those of us in, in this, I don't like to call it a fight because I don't like to fight against anything, but we're really about creating healthy lives and healthy kids. Those of us that are passionate about that, we're just like, thank you, Mrs. Obama. Well, you just got back from Washington from what I hear. I know. We were, uh, oh, what a dream come true. We were performing at the White House at the Easter egg hunt and uh, we had a whole hoopa palooza area and we were on our stage was right in front of the White House and uh, although I didn't hoop with the First Lady or the President we did get a chance to uh, to hoop and dance with Sasha and Malia and yeah it was awesome we taught them all these cool tricks and how were they oh they're, they're the cutest kids and they've just got fire in their eyes and beautiful hearts and uh, they're just, they're filled with grace. They really are. And they're just beaming with smiles and all their friends. And it was, it was a dream come true. Well, you know, you were talking about some of the causes of childhood obesity involving fast food. And a lot of people see childhood obesity as a class kind of problem. Do you think that different groups of different economic levels approach it differently? You know, there is definitely a link between poverty and obesity. 
weirdly enough, you'd think that poverty uh, would be linked with malnutrition in the form of being very, very thin. But malnutrition is just that, poor nutrition. So, um, you know, in some of these lower economic areas, there aren't grocery stores. Or why would you go and buy a bunch of vegetables that your kids aren't going to eat when you can feed your whole family for $5 and they'll eat it? However, uh, I don't think it's a, definitely a, a class thing because I work with the, you know, the poorest of the poor and the richest of the rich as far as children go and their families, and I see it. It's, uh, it's, it's a truly an epidemic. And I also travel outside of the country um, when I'm in the UK, although they're number two to us in, as far as obesity goes. Um, it's not even close. I mean, America is, it's, it's a very, very serious problem. And I hope that it doesn't take a third grader having a heart attack in math class to, for people to wake up or for the healthcare industry to completely go bankrupt. I talked with um, a gentleman from, from a, a big healthcare provider and they say that $2 out of every 10 is spent on uh, diabetes. Very, very serious as far as the economic well, concerns. There's been a new show on ABC, I'm sure you've seen I it, love Food it. Revolution. Love it, love Jamie Oliver. And how do, you, how do you approach that on a mass level? I mean, this is, he's going into schools, Jamie Oliver is going into schools and approaching it from a micro level. But how do you approach solving this problem from a macro level? Well, using the entertainment industry. You know, that's where my background is. So we've made DVDs, we're working on a TV show ourselves. Um, even though he's going into schools and doing it on a smaller level, it's a national show. So he's bringing awareness on a larger level. And through a non-intimidating, uh, you know, entertaining way, he, he's really showing America about how important it is to make changes and what these changes need to be. So I look forward to following suit. Um, you know, we, we were working on a, on a small level in the sense that we're in schools. Um, we're in probably, I'd say, three, over 3,000 schools right now that we've worked with, maybe even more. It's hard to tell after a while. But, uh, but there's the ripple effect. You know, you, 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 you train the teachers, you train the parents, you work in the communities, and, and it, it ripples. Mm -hmm. Jamie has the unfortunate task of trying to change people's taste buds, and that's the challenge with nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, French fries taste better than carrots, yes. <laughs> unless you develop it, you know, I, I personally like carrots better because I feel not so good after French fries. <laughs> but, well, um, we're going to talk more about that. We're going to take a quick break, sure. but uh, we'll be right back with more, so stay tuned. She says that all the time. What's that? Hello? I'm on the phone. Mom, I'm on the phone! Hello? I'm on the phone. Who's this? It's me. I'm on the phone. Mom. Oh, you're on the phone. <laughs> all right. Sorry! Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, anyway. Who are you talking to? Mom. All right. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. Big dreams and good grades aren't enough to get into college. There are actual steps you need to take. Finding someone who can help is the first and most important. For the next steps, go to knowhowtogo.org. Welcome back to CU. Before we go back to our guests for tonight, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please shoot us an email at cu at trojanvision.com. You can also catch us live streaming on the web 24-7 at www.trojanvision.com. Now we're back with our guest for tonight, Kelly McQuinn from Kid Tribe, and she's been talking to us about child obesity. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about your organization, a little bit more about your organization? Sure. And the clips that we watched, you said that you shot it, you produced it, you choreographed it all? I did. Well, uh, prior to founding Kid Tribe, I, I was an actress and uh, I was in production a lot. And uh, it really came about after September 11th. 
you know, it just hit my heart and I knew that I had to step up and do something to make this world a better place for kids. So uh, Why kids after September 11th? Well, because I can't go and change people's minds, older people's minds that have already been made up, nor do I want to fight that fight. Mm -hmm. But what I can do is affect the lives, you know, keep the, the soil fertile, so to speak, and never, you know, have these people, these young people grow up and have them never forget who they are and realize how special they are. And that even though they're small, they have the power of choice for themselves. Not just for food, right? In no, your program, you emphasize it's, a it's, lot of different well, it's, things. Well, it's self-esteem, it's peace. It's respect, respecting yourself, respecting others, respecting your property, your school. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a multi-dimensional program that kind of found its wings within fighting childhood obesity and promoting exercise and healthy behaviors. So we started with very, very humble beginnings. Um, I had a couple hundred dollars in my bank account and, uh, and started teaching after school dance classes really not knowing if I had lost my mind or if I was on to something. How are your parents treating this? Oh, they're so proud. They really are. Um, you know, it's been a complete self-funded entrepreneurial venture. And, uh, and every year it's grown and grown and grown and grown. And now we're, we've really become one of the nationally recognized leaders in childhood obesity prevention. Um, we have an international training program. We have over two million children that we've worked with tens and tens of thousands of teachers. And I have the privilege of traveling all over the world and, uh, and, and working with, with kids and teachers and families. And then um, found myself back in front of and behind the camera in producing our DVDs. Um, I just wrote and directed and produced and choreographed a hip hop musical for NASA which is called Space School Musical, which, uh, you know, educatingly, entertainingly teaches kids about the solar system. And that's my whole thing is how do you reach the kids? What's the, what's the message we want to send them? Because you need to get them on, on their level and also create healthy role models because unfortunately, most of the role models in the media today, in my opinion, they just aren't cutting it. So, you know, if we've got to step up because it's, uh, it's an intense world for children right now. And they're so smart and uh, they really need guidance and, and, and they, need to, they need to love themselves and, and move their bodies and, and, and you know. Be happy about be it. Be happy. <laughs> well, you said you've, you've taken your message to many different countries at this point, And the United States is still number one in child, uh, childhood obesity. Yeah. How do you think that Americans really approach the issue differently from people in other nations? Well, hmm, that's an interesting question. First of all, I don't think Americans think they have a problem because, uh, you know, it, it's a really interesting dichotomy because in the magazines, the models are getting photoshopped smaller, yet in the stores, the sizes are getting bigger and the numbers are getting smaller. So what was a size two is now really a four. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really strange. But um, I, I don't really know how far it has to go, um, you know, because overweight adults have overweight children and then the town becomes overweight and you just consider that Seems normal. Seems like a never-ending cycle. Yeah, it's, it, it is. And, and it becomes normal. So, you know, it's, it's, I hope that it doesn't have to come to a, a great tragedy on a personal or a national level for people to wake up. The hard thing, though, is that we're trying to change habits. And I don't know if you've ever tried to change any habits of yours, but it's, it's hard and it takes willpower and it takes support and it takes encouragement, it takes strength, and it takes a sense of believing in yourself and, and a need. So um, I'm, I try to also circumvent that a little bit by making it so much fun and so positive that you know when you're getting oxygen in your body and you're feeling great about who you are and you're starting to feel tone and you know and you have more confidence and you're you're standing taller um, you want to do that more and you want to drink more water and you want to eat better because you don't want to go you know and have a 
fast food, Big Mac, whatever mm -hmm. it is, after you're, you're exercising. So you said your program has been in the works for eight years now. Mm -hmm. And have you been reaching the kids for eight years? Yeah. And have, have you talked to any of your graduates from your first class? I mean, have you seen the changes in people's habits as your program has gone on? Well, really, uh, it, yes, I have. And it, it really all started for me when um, I got called into one of my, my dad's offices um, who one of my original original kids and he said what are you doing to my son and I was like what do you mean <laughs> what am I doing to your son and that's an ominous question <laughs> I know I'm like, uh, and um, and he said he's losing weight he is getting better grades he got the lead in the school play he has new friends and all he can do is talk about kid tribe what are you doing to my son and I had tears in my eyes and I just said, I am, your son's amazing and I'm only giving him an avenue where he can express that and shine and I'm just reflecting that back to him. Because that's really, isn't that what we all want? We all just want to be seen. So I might be doing an event with 500 or 1,000 kids and all it takes is me looking in their eye for one second and giving them a high five or doing the peace out handshake with them. You know, that, that one moment when someone really sees you and says you're awesome, that can change their life. And the ripple effect, look at our president right now, look at all of our great teachers, would they be where they are if someone didn't believe in them? So that's really what me and my team do. We go and we're, we're the Pied Pipers. We just blast the hip hop music, positive hip hop music, of course. <laughs> um, you know, None of that bootylicious no, stuff. No, <laughs> no, bootylicious. But, you know, we, we scan everything to make sure it's all rated G mm -hmm. because that's the other thing I want to preserve their innocence. I, I'm, I'm sure they know every word to all these songs, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I want to keep it rated G and clean and positive and just have them feel like they're utter, complete rock stars and that they can do anything that they put their minds to. What age do you think, is there a limit to when you can change people's minds? You said that for habits, you wanted to target younger people because adults, their habits don't change as much. But in your experience, what do you see as that cutoff age that you really can't reach somebody? I, I just believe in humanity. So I think whether there's a will, there's a way, and there's always a way, um, especially when people are really up against a health crisis and the will to live and the will to thrive kicks in um, but there is there are a lot of studies saying in the first five years you know in the in the in the first nine years you really have to get them and instill these positive messages um, you know it gets a little it gets a little tough around those middle school years but we see it uh, I love to see how the kids or the teachers are when they first walk into one of our, our shows or our trainings and how they are when they walk in and then how they are when they leave because there's definitely a transformation that takes place. I think it's just a matter of finding the right words, the right, you know, just the right vehicle. It's tricky because I don't want to say, hey, fatty, you got to change, you know. I mean, I don't want anyone, I don't want to enforce anyone's Like a, using a negative. I don't want right. to, yeah, I don't want to enforce anyone's low self-image at all. Mm -hmm. It's really about how much do you want to live and how, how much fun do you want to have while you're living. Because as far as I know, we only have one life, so let's do it. So can you tell me a little bit about the correlation between childhood obesity and adult obesity? Well, I mean, obese children grow into obese adults. And I forget the exact statistic, but it's something like o overweight or obese parents, like 30%, you have a 30% greater chance of raising overweight kids. I mean, there's just a definite correlation. Mm -hmm. But if a child, you know, it pains me when I see these little four-year-olds with these big tummies and 10-year-olds because for the rest of their lives, they're going to have an uphill battle. And, um, you know, you see some people that can afford the trainers and can afford the nutritionists, but most people don't, so they're on their own. And there's not a lot of guidance. So it's, it's really, it's, it's hard. What do you think has been the biggest challenge for you in creating this charity or this movement? It, yeah, we're not a charity, mm -hmm. but we are a movement. movement. <laughs> um, you know what? I haven't had that many obstacles. I really believe that when you're doing what you're supposed to do on this earth mm -hmm. and when you're aligned with the path of service and you're just passionate about it, 
it happens. A dear friend of mine, when I, ver when I first began this, because it was hard for me to let go of my, my identity as an actress and move into, into this unknown territory, and he gave me the best piece of advice I ever had. He said, just make a decision and do it no matter what. And so every day we've done that. But doors have opened. I mean, I started this with a couple hundred dollars, and three days ago I was at the White House. You know, uh, and it's and, and I think things are just going to continue to unfold. Well, what kind of things? As you go into the future, what are you hoping well, to do? Well, we are developing a television show similar to Jamie Oliver's. Um, we're also developing a, a show for little ones, little you know preschool show as well. We have books in the works, um, a national tour, um, you know, just a world record. We're going to produce a world record at the Home Depot Center uh, for the most number of hula hoopers in one location. How so. many hula hoopers would that take? Well, so far the current record is a couple thousand, so we're going to just like... No psh, kidding. Wow. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> we're gonna, that's one phone call for me. So, uh, you know, because we work with groups of, you know, five, ten, fifteen thousand at once. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's my favorite thing to do in the world, is to be around like ten thousand kids and have the mic and everyone going, kid, tribe, kid, tribe. So, I mean, I... I truly, truly love what I do, and every step of the way, meet people who are passionate about the cause, who believe in kids, who want to affect the future, and then I get to, I get to work with kids, you know, and people who love kids, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, there's not a day that goes by where I just don't have that feeling in, in my heart that we're really making a change. You know, really quick, right before we finish, can you tell us where we can find out more information about Sure. Kid Tribe? Go to kidtribe.com, K-I-D-T-R-I-B-E.com. Um, and also we're on Facebook. We've got a fan page. And uh, hopefully pretty soon you won't have to go too far because we'll be all over the TV. Well, good luck with that. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank Kelly you for McQuinn from me. Kid Tribe. And thank you for tuning in to see you at USC. We'll see you again next week. Since 1929, the USC School of Cinematic Arts has fueled and mirrored the growth of entertainment as an industry and an art form. The school offers comprehensive programs in animation and digital arts, critical studies, directing, producing, interactive media, production, and writing, all backed by a broad liberal arts education in each field. CU at USC is brought to you by the University of Southern California's School of Cinematic Arts.